All right, 48.1. And I am pleased to announce for one of the first times in the history of this production that I pooped at the right time. Now the deal is, since I was 21 and first started taking off my clothes in wait, public... Wait, 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 hang on, hang on. I, I know I'm interrupting you, but are you sure this is where we want to go with this production? It will be done in a second. But for my first, you know, uh, audition to be a stripper the week before my 21st birthday. I was v always very, starting then and ever since, I've always been very concerned about uh, pooping at the right time so you get the concavity. I don't think I've had the concavity until tonight where you actually, it, goes, it tucks in from here to here because there's no poop here. And also because I'm sucking it up. So tonight I was lucky enough to poop at the right time and we've got some concavity. All right. All right. Now, we'll move on to the next topic, um, which is uh, the feud between Jimmy Kimmel and Sean Hannity, um, which began, I think, Thursday, when uh, Jimmy Kimmel told, eh, I mean, it, it was barely a joke. Uh, he showed a clip of... Melania, the first lady, reading to a few, you know, four or five year olds at the uh, White House Easter egg roll from a Dr. Seuss type book. And she's, and he played the clip, and then he said, this and that, which I guess is the way Melania pronounces this and that. And then he turned to Guillermo, his uh, Latino sidekick, and said, Guillermo, you could be first lady someday, and Guillermo laughed, and that was it. It's barely a joke. But this infuriated uh, Hannity, um, or the disrespect for our first lady. And then Hannity started, you know, and then Jimmy kind of likes feuds because he's, he's good at them and because he thinks they're funny. And so Jimmy kind of egged Hannity on, and Hannity started calling Jimmy, Harvey Weinstein Jr., uh, implying that Jimmy is a brutal sexual harasser, um, and started, Hannity started showing clips from The Man Show, particularly a clip, and this is a clip from I don't know, roughly 18 years ago called, I believe, called What's in My Pants, where Jimmy had women guess what was down the front of his pants by biting the front of his pants. And um, Jimmy countered by saying, well, every woman in that bit signed a release saying they were fine with participating in the bit, um, which is, you know, unlike, it's not sexual harassment. If, if, sorry, and it went back and forth, and today Jimmy apologized, though conservatives consider it an off-target and half-hearted apology because he didn't directly say, I'm sorry, Melania Trump. Now, Lance, you say something, then I'll go into the joke. Um, am I gonna, do you wanna tell your joke now? No, I mean, I just, I'm gonna break down the joke. I don't think it's a particular, I don't think it's particularly disrespectful to Melania Trump. Well, actually, I do have an opinion about this, unfortunately. Okay. And what a lot of people are saying is that she does speak five languages. And the question to Jimmy Kimmel is, how many languages does he speak? I mean, you know. Yeah, that was already five, asked. That was five asked. languages uh, is pretty, you, you've got to be pretty impressive to be able to do that. So I have to be honest with you. I don't make fun of, I have a lot of students from other countries in my classes, and I don't make fun of their accents because I'm pretty impressed that a Chinese person can speak any English at all. So he must have been reaching, you know. I mean, I well, saw, they, wait, I saw the clip. Yeah of her reading to kids, and I didn't know her accent was that thick. 
that she would say this and that. It maybe she, isn't. She maybe does, it no, but she sounded a little bit like a cartoon character, like Natasha. Is this and that? This. Yeah, I mean, she did. She did have a very thick cartoon character kind of accent. I was pretty surprised by it. But then I immediately thought, well, you know, what if I had to translate from Hungarian? Or, or, I don't know. She's she's Czech, or she's. You know, I, what country is she from? I forget. Romania or, or Czech? Mm-hmm. Anyway, uh, Slovakia. Yes, yeah, so one but of those anyway, Slovakia. It's not one of those of languages that's easy to uh, go from to English. So now you may say, well, okay, it's just humor. But that leads me to my ultimate point. My ultimate point is this. I had a, I had a student come in here that hates Trump. And she was all excited. Like, it was like Hillary had won the election. And I said, so what's going on? Well, Trump's son, he's getting a divorce. I said, okay. Well, ha, he's getting a divorce. Donald Jr., yeah, yeah. And I thought to myself, Democrats are such fucked assholes that they they can't leave Trump's family alone they they don't interrupt me I can hear your little mouth salivating they they can't get away now this student happens to be a very sweet person she's a nice person in a lot of ways but just the malicious glee that you poor pathetic wounded animals are getting from criticizing Melania her accent and the, the you know the the marriage between uh, 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 Trump's kids isn't working out. Uh, so I'm going to partly mean, what's agree the, with what's you. What's the matter with you? I'm going to partly agree with you, and I would and I'm going to endorse Twitter, which does a lot of stuff that is annoying, but it's a good lesson in whether or not and how much you should have of schadenfreude schadenfreude is 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 super big now in the in america which is glee at somebody else's uh, misfortune and you know i've read you know when the divorce was first first came out i've, I've, I've since then i've read you know roughly 200 tweets pertaining to don jr's divorce and yeah, it, it, it's not the best thing to just be um, gleeful at, at some family's um, misfortune. At the same time, you can make jokes about it. You know, it's funny, though. There was so much to be made fun of about the Obama administration, about Michelle. Well, I'm gonna, let, let, let's talk about that. But and, first, and, and Malia, and this and that, and I never, I never made any jokes about Michelle, or uh, or 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 Malia, or the kids. It just didn't occur to me. I, I couldn't. I didn't really bring my hatred of Obama, which who I do hate. I hate Obama, but it never occurred to me to make fun of of his wife or his kids. Well, let's and talk it about. Just, it oh. fascinates me how how vile and petty. Democrats are when they're always telling me how superior and empathetic they are. They're, they're not superior and empathetic. They're a bunch of assholes when they lose. All right, so let's talk about Melania. I don't think that most people um, dislike her or find her contemptible. Or I think that most people, liberals included, um, find her deeply enmeshed in a situation that she didn't sign on for. And this is all fantasy, by the way. You're just making this up. What, that people don't... This is, this is just what you imagine. Well, all right, then I'll... Then I mean, as a, all right, say, so let you, me... This is what you imagine. Well, then let me say that on a person, I can talk about what I think. Okay. Which is, you know, she, she didn't sign on to become the first lady. That, she had no idea. And then Trump himself... Did, according to everything I've heard, nobody in that camp thought that Trump was going to win. 
Most of the country didn't think so. A lot of the polling indicated that he didn't have much of a chance. Um, and she's been, I don't know, I think she, she hasn't been acting like an a-hole. I think she's been holding up you know, reasonably well. She hasn't done anything jerky uh, or entitled. She, I think I personally have a certain amount of sympathy for her. Um, well, why do you need sympathy for her? Because she's in a public position that she didn't ask to be in. Did you have sympathy for Michelle? To some extent, yeah. Though she was more, I mean, she, they had a more reasonable shot at, in, the, in everybody's minds, you know, with, Nobody was, few people, fewer people were surprised when Obama won the election than when Trump won. Mm. Yeah, come on. No, I mean, when he first ran, he was the spoiler against Hillary. Yeah, but by the end, the people polling said that he had a... a, a yeah, but but I, if I was Melania... I'd be very proud that I was part of a historic revival of the United States. I'd be very proud that I could be a part of it. I wouldn't need the sympathy of liberals. Well, all right, she's, regardless, she has my sympathy. Because she's... She has your sympathy because liberals are such assholes that, I can't, that they can't leave her alone. Well, let, let's look at the joke, which is she's reading to kids, and she says a couple words with a heavy accent. Jimmy plays the clip and he says to Guillermo, who also has a heavy accent, well, you could be first lady someday. Now, the re uh, no, no, hold on, let me, let me, let me, okay, I think, now you're going to accuse me of, of soft peddling. Well, in the first place, it's a softball joke. It's barely a joke. Mm. And it, it's not particularly vicious. Because he, he's playing an actual clip and he just makes an offhand comment afterwards. It's not like he's... And the, the, thinking about the joke, which I've done a lot since this feud started, it's somewhat about, if not mostly about, how ridiculous this part of the Easter egg, the White House Easter egg role is, where the, the First Lady is expected to, to read a children's book to a few kids. And it's like, I mean, how fun is that in general? It's more a photo op, and that you have a woman with an accent reading to kids kind of underlines the unfunness and photo op ridiculous ritual nature of the whole thing. The whole thing's just kind of goofy. And uh, I don't know how hurt Melania's feelings. I guess that's the, the, the true uh, index of whether it, it was a, a mean joke or not. I don't, I don't think it was a mean joke at all. I, I couldn't care less, and I doubt if she does. What bothers me is that Jimmy Kimmel has decided that he's going to be an arbiter of, he's now going to be a commentator on politics. And and I really don't understand where this came from. He started off as a, as a comedian that, that, when he had good writers, was pretty funny. And uh, now we get dished up. Well, you, you, you just don't think he's funny because some of his opinions don't mesh with yours. No, I, it has nothing to do with it. I, I know that, uh, I, frankly, I, I, I never, I don't have a TV. I don't watch the Kimmel show. So how do you know whether he's funny or I'll not? I'll tell you how I know. Because um, he, he's, I think he's a talented man. And, and what clips I've seen over the years of him were funny. My problem is that for some reason he's taken it upon himself to turn his show into political commentary. All right, well, that we did not ask him for. Well, and and wait, you you right, spoke, right, and right, I get right, to speak. Right. I actually have an opinion about this, and that is, why doesn't he just? Um, who asked him 
to become uh, some sort of political satirist. It's not his strength. He never says anything original or interesting that you couldn't hear on a hundred other uh, more astute political shows. But you don't shows. watch him. You just watch the occasional clip that's no, been I, picked I've, for I've you. Heard a, I've heard a number of his jokes on... on uh, on uh, the Oscars and, and, a, and a variety of things. And he just basically decided that he was going to go after Trump like a thousand other liberal Hollywood people. And it, it frankly, I find it very dull. Trump was the, and, is and the it, president. It, yeah, he didn't. And, All right, and, so and, and now we're going to have this discussion. He was z nowhere near as vicious as he was to Obama. And then you're going to say, well, Obama wasn't funny. Yeah, OK, let me tell you something. There were a million jokes he could have made about Obama. He didn't want to do it because he's a liberal. And for some reason, he's decided to turn his show into an anti-Trump thing. And then he goes after Trump's wife. So people are just fed up but with But you just said the joke was harmless and not it, me. No, but it's sort of like, just Jimmy, well, shut up. We don't need your goddamn opinions about Melania or Trump or anybody else. This didn't you don't, he, he doesn't know any more about politics than anybody else does. Well, he probably not, does. No, he doesn't. I mean, he, he doesn't know as much as you do, and you don't know anything. I sat at a table with the man for years and years, and the man knows more about most stuff than I do. Not about physics, but it's not a show about physics. And I wasn't hired for my physics knowledge anyway. But the deal is, Jimmy's been on for more than 15, on late night for more than 15 years. He's told close to 100,000 jokes, and he's shown roughly 10,000 clips of, you know, there's a whole team that gathers clips. And if he, he he likes Jimmy being a comedian, likes to show things that are funny or absurd. And her accent is funny. I'll give you that. Okay. And I. She sounds like a cartoon character. Like you can't believe people still have accents like that. She would be like the evil spy on a 1960s uh, spy show. Or I, don't, I mean, she can't help it. She's, she has, I mean, she speaks a bunch of languages, though in. The, it's, it's more of a thing to speak a bunch of languages in Europe where you know, everybody ends up speaking some degree of English or something, most yeah, people. Yeah, I never, I never met any, I, I've known people that can speak five languages and they're smart. Okay, so she's probably pretty smart. But I just, you see, it's the larger but, question but, is this, why do we need Jimmy Kimmel to go after Trump every night? Is this his thing now? Is he on a crusade? I mean, if he is, yeah, if you, we should change the, the show. We should just invite Nancy Pelosi and some of the other uh, 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 Chuck Schumer and, and have them regale us with their views on politics every night. Well, here's the deal. If you're going to tell a joke, like people think that Leno was conservative and Jimmy is liberal, I would argue that the true difference is that Leno's jokes were easier to understand and required less background or were of the nature, have you heard about this? And that most late night people, hosts, rather than being liberal or conservative, with some notable exceptions, um, attempt to be and are naturally commonsensical because the commonsensical stance is you look for absurdity wherever you can find it and absurdity is easier to joke about because the joke is right there you don't have to provide background if you're showing a clip that's funny the funny's right there you don't have to it, it, it's easier and better and takes less time and the punchline lands harder if you don't have to background everything to get to the to contextualize the punchline and I worked let's see I worked there well I worked there from late 2002 until um, 
mid-2014, and that encompassed most of Obama's administration. And Obama was, I feel, harder to joke about. There were less handles to grab on Obama. And any late night staff has a variety of people um, of various political persuasions, though this being Hollywood, you, you, you're probably going to find a majority left leaning on just about any show with a large staff. But that doesn't mean that you have zero conservatives. Um, and everybody's pretty much just looking for stuff to make jokes about. Yeah. Here, I'm going to tell you a little joke. Do you know what a but AB54 is? Is it the one? It's some piece of California legislation. Yeah, you know what it does? I don't know. It's probably the one where you, you don't report uh, felons you're releasing to ICE or some crap like yeah, that. Yeah, so if you happen to be an illegal alien, and you rape a uh, and you rape a woman. It's uh, the the state of California has made it illegal to report that person to ICE uh, after so the person gets out of prison. Yeah, so that he, so so that no, when normally ICE works with the uh, penal uh, system, so that when a uh, uh, a violent felon is being released and they happen to be illegal, the uh, ICE can deport them. And uh, now the Democrats have made it so that uh, they, the, it's illegal for the sheriffs to tell ICE that a rapist is being uh, released. So what does this I, have to do with late night? Well, I was yeah. getting to that. All right. And look at all the I background. I was getting here. to that. All right, right, go ahead. Because I think that's absurd. And look at all no, the... No, 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 no. I think that it's more absurd that the, the Democrats that control the state of California are releasing rapists after they've done their time and preventing ICE from deporting them. So they're going back into the community that, that the state of California, the Democrats are protecting them. Now I think that's more absurd, even, even more absurd than Melania's accent. But you won't hear one goddamn word about that from Jimmy Kimmel. Probably not. And, I have and a, you know why? No, I do know, you know why, why, and it's not you why, why you think. You know why? You know why? Because it's more tragic than funny. It's tragically absurd. So to me, the Democrats are far more worthy of this mirth, of this humor, because their behavior is insane. They don't have just funny little accents. They're actually releasing murderers and rapists and gang members back into the California community, and old Jimmy Kimmel is silent about that. No, he wants to concentrate on the first lady's accent. Jimmy Kimmel showed a three or four second clip of, of Melania, and the joke was built and right in. And tomorrow there's going to be a joke about Trump, and the next day there'll be a joke about Trump, and the next day... Well, Trump makes it easy with his tweets. Yeah, really, and the Democrats are, are look how faultless. Long it's, look They're how, faultless look, when they release rapists into the community. You just said it's not funny, it's tragic. And look how long it took you. It took you two or three minutes to explain AB 54. Well, they could have a clip. Why don't they have a clip of the Democrats releasing rapists into the community? Where's the and then, joke And then in Jimmy that? could say, this is really absurd, isn't it? It's, it's, it's not the funniest thing, but it's not a real knee slapper, but it's very absurd. Don't you think Democrats are absurd when they do things like that? And how about old Obama? Wasn't it? Wasn't it absurd well, when he said... This is a crazy load of whataboutism. Well, we're you're, talking you're about trying nothing. to tell me, you're trying to tell me that the Trump administration is funnier than the Obama administration. And I'm trying to tell you the Democrats have gone out of their minds 
And what you're dealing with with Trump is a guy trying to do the best he can to save our country from a bunch of left-wing kooks that were more concerned about getting transgenders into our bathrooms than closing the missile gap with Russia and China. Yeah, all right. So if you want to look at presidents who are funny. I think, getting, I think being really worried about getting transgenders into our bathrooms is funny. I think that's funny. I don't know, he did some stuff on that. What did he do? I don't know. He tried to get as many transgenders into our bathrooms so they can pee next to your nine-year-old daughter as he could. Jimmy Kimmel? What jokes did he do? I do you thought know we were talking about Obama. No, we're talking about what's funny. We're not talking, we're talking about, like Nixon did, did, was- did, did Kimmel think it was funny that that Obama wanted to get transgenders into the bathrooms to pee next to your nine-year-old daughter? Did, did Jimmy Kimmel think that was funny? Because I think it's funny. I, I don't know, because I haven't worked there. Dur I didn't no work there during- No jokes about transgenderism. Probably, but Pro I don't know. No, really? Were there jokes about transgenderism? Yes, I'm sure there were, not any, many. Any jokes about, any jokes about- um, You're asking me stuff I don't know, because I haven't worked there. No, in no, because I can, I can prove it. I, I'm certain that there were no jokes about transgenderism. But you know, I think it's funny when a I'll, guy wait, cuts his penis off. I'll, I'll bet if you, I'll bet you jokes, actual if there money. Were, I'll if bet there you were actual any jokes, I'll bet they were supportive of transgenderism. I don't think Jimmy Kimmel said one word about how funny it is that hundreds and thousands of Americans are racing into the surgery rooms getting their penises chopped off because of the Democrats are driving people nuts. And, and Jimmy didn't say one word about how funny that is. I think that's crazy. You're, I think it's a lot you're weirder. You're supporting a, a fringy agenda yourself right here. A fringy agenda. Yeah. So, so wait a minute. I'm the one that's fringy because I don't think men should cut their penises off. And I think it's funny when they do. Yeah, that's kind of fringy. But you think it's hilarious that... that, that now, you can think it's... I don't think there are that many people who think it's, the whole issue is hilarious. I think there are people who are concerned and think it's misguided. I don't think there are many people who think it's hilarious. I don't even think you think it's hilarious. I think that you just think it's something to pontificate on. I, I think... It, you I don't th find I it... Think, a, a, I think Jimmy has, has treated it... If he's treated it at all, he's treated it with tremendous respect. I, you will not hear one word from Jimmy Kimmel about how weird it is that men are chopping their penises off. I'm sure he's... I'm sure he's reverential towards it. Now, you get a first lady that happens to be a world-class beauty and has a funny accent, well, you're going to you're going to hear It's an something. easy thing to joke about. You something. show a clip. You're going to hear something about about that. Jimmy Kimmel's a brave man. He'll stand up to that. Jimmy Kimmel's job is to tell jokes. Now, a couple times things hit close to home for him. When they shot up Las Vegas and 54 people died. Yeah. And so I think 700 people were wounded, and that's his hometown, mm -hmm. where he lived since he was from the age of 10 to when he left to become a radio guy. He, that made him sad. He used to you know, drive the strip with a fire extinguisher and squirt tourists. And were there any jokes about Bruce Jenner? Yeah, I'm sure, oh, that, I was thinking that if he was going to joke, if he was going to joke about transgenderism, the jokes would be, most of them would probably be about Caitlyn Jenner. Well, let's see him. Let's see him. All right, let's go let's upstairs. Look, All right. Let's look him up. We're breaking right now. All right. I, I'm not going to. You can. Okay.